boy, we've got a great show for you this week. There's no question about it. No question about it. Uh, our next, uh, our next uh, speaker hails all the way from Agora Hills in California. That's pretty close to um, Los Angeles. I'm sure the weather's nice out there. He's got a master's in clinical psychology. He's a life coach, uh, speaker, and director of Better Man Coaching. He's also a husband and a father. Been married for over 30 years. Be God, we'll have to talk to him about that. Uh, I read his book, and I really enjoyed it. This man is... There's no question about this lad. He's walking his talk and talking his walk. So welcome, uh, gentlemen, welcome to our show, uh, Mr. Wayne Levine. Uh, Wayne, are you there? I am here. All right, wonderful. Thanks. Let me just hang up here now. All right. Wayne, thanks very much for uh, giving us your show today. I I know that you're you're a very busy man, so cheers. Yeah, no problem. I love talking about this, right? It's um, helping the men is um, my higher purpose, and I'm telling you there are not enough of us out there uh, doing this work. Well, I tell you, I, uh, I sat down and I read your book, and it's one of those little books. Uh, you know what? I really like that your book, Wayne, um, How to Hold On to Your Nuts and Be a Better Man. That's a great name, by the way. Uh, it's very clear. It's a very simple. It's very direct, and, and, and I would say it's very manly. So it's definitely a, a nice read for, for the men out there. Now, tell me something. What, uh, what inspired you to write this book, Wayne? Well, I got involved with men's work back in the early 90s, having done my first men's weekend retreat. And, you know, it changed my life. It took years to change me, but it changed my life. And it introduced me to this world of support and wisdom and masculinity that I had no idea existed. And because I had grown up with a single mom, my dad died when I was young and she never remarried. And so I just never had that kind of mentoring and fathering like a lot of men, um, you know, whether your dad was there, not there, divorced, not divorced, alive, whatever. You know, a lot of us have shared that experience of not getting the fathering that we really wanted or, or felt we needed. <clears throat> so I did this weekend and got involved in this organization and years later I decided you know I I wondered whether I could do this for a living because I was really losing my passion for the work I'd been doing before Mm. so I went back and got my masters and planned to be a therapist changed my mind decided to be a coach and knew that um, I had to write down what I had learned and what had evolved over the years and sort of the basic tenets of you know what we're trying to help each other through especially in our relationships yeah because we we as men i mean you said it yourself there at the start we need a lot of help in this area and it's one of the inspirations uh, for this show is to really get as much information as we can out there for men because uh, we certainly certainly need it now uh, we i suppose we better tell uh, we better tell the men out there what uh, uh, your book is <laughs> How to Hold On to Your Nuts and Be a Better Man. Uh, what, what are nuts and why are they important to men? Right. So the title, the title is uh, Hold On to Your Nuts, the Relationship Manual for Men. And so the focus of the book is on you and you in relationships. And it's not, it's not all the work that we do, right? But it's, it's where a lot of us need to get started because we're having so much trouble and we're so distracted with the pain and frustration that we're suffering from in our relationships that we need to we need to start fixing that part of our lives so that we can start looking at other areas like our spiritual path uh, for instance so nuts stands for non-negotiable unalterable terms and these are the things that define a man that a man is committed to and these are the things which if compromised Will turn you into a pissed off guy, mm-hmm. and then when you're when you're in that place, and you start taking it out on the people closest to you, especially your mate, your spouse. Right now, you, what what would be some examples now of, of you work with a lot of men, and I know that you do uh, men's retreats, and you yes. also uh, do men's groups. What would be an example of some some you know nuts for men? One nut might be um, I take my problems to the men, not to my woman. Mm, um, I exercise three days a week. It could be something very simple. I mean, what we do when we look at our nuts is we, we look at, well, what is not working in our lives right now? And so the nut is just a way to start taking action and knowing what you're committed to uh, so that you can start making these changes. And eventually, um, you come up with a nut like mine, which is, I do as I see fit. Mm-hmm. And that means a lot to me. 
Um, I know what it means. I know what I've gone through over the last 20 plus years to get here. Um, and I started out with a lot of other nuts, you know, where I had to focus in my attention to make important changes as a father, husband, at work. And But it all came down eventually to as I do as I see fit. And so that's the nut that I carry around with me. No, yeah. I, th- I think if men were out there listening to that, um, you know, they might think, oh, well, I can do I do, do as I please. But that's, that's not what you're saying. You're coming from, like, a, a value-based. Yes. You know, it's interesting you mention that because uh, I've gotten a lot of comments over the years. I wrote the book maybe eight years ago, and I got a lot of comments from men and women who don't understand what I'm trying to say. Mm. It's because this language is so charged. Um, there's so much anger and resentment towards men, both from women and self-hatred in, in, in men. They don't understand what it means to be a man, meaning to be the man you want to be and at the same time to be compassionate and loving and considerate and spiritual and all that stuff. And so, unfortunately, you know, people hear what they want to hear, they read what they want to read, and oftentimes they don't stick around long enough to truly understand what someone's trying to say. And so when I say I do as I see fit, that's after a lot of work of understanding who I am and what it means to be a loving, compassionate man, and what I'm committed to, right? So I have to go through all that to make my decisions. Um, But it's not about doing whatever you want um, and not being mindful of how it affects others. At the same time, we have to be willing to do what's right for us, to be the men we want to be and to be happy, um, even if it's going to disappoint somebody else. And, you know, that's a larger discussion um, that the fear of disappointing somebody is what keeps a lot of men in relationships longer than they should be. Yeah, right. And even even the fear of, of uh, taking, and I speak for myself, you know, in relationships, one of the things that I, that I, uh, I really enjoyed reading in your book, you were talking about intimacy and, and vulnerability. Why is it so hard uh, for men to uh, be vulnerable? In, in front of women now, I think it's easier to be uh, uh, vulnerable in front of men, but not so uh, easy to be vulnerable in front of a woman. Well, I mean, the men that I meet have a hard time being vulnerable in front of men as well. Yeah. I mean, taking off the mask is sort of job one when the men get together um, because we're, we're so conditioned to be competitive and we don't want to show any weakness. Um, with women, a lot of men are not wanting to be vulnerable because they've been hurt, either by their mothers, um, by their fathers, seeing how their mother and father were in relationship together. They, they are afraid of the emotionality of their women. They don't know how to respond. Um, and so to not get hurt, to not look foolish, to not lose her, um, all these fears um, keep men guarded. And that's why they, they, they are afraid or, or haven't learned how to speak their truth, to say what they want. Um, I think for the most part, I, and I, I see a lot of men just really afraid of being alone, and so they don't want to risk what they have. And they, over the years, learn to not quite say what's on their minds until they're very unhappy because they're not getting what they want. Right. Yeah. We don't. We don't want to. We don't want to upset the uh, either the other half or the family or whoever it might whoever it might be. Um, you know, I, I really connected, uh, and I've never been now. Um, I, I started actually a little small men's group at my house. Uh, a few months ago, um, but what you're talking about uh, in the book, Wayne, you're, you know, you say take your problems to men and not to your women, and you mentioned there about, you know, if you're constantly bringing your stuff to your woman, then you're putting a lot of strain on the energy. So what are some of the, what are some of the values uh, for men in taking their problem to, to a man or to a men's group? Well, if you're leaning on your woman to help you solve all your problems, you're chipping away at her femininity. Oh. You're, you're making her do a job she wasn't made to do. Now, good women will be there. Good women will, will want to try to help you. But I can just tell you from being on the other side of a relationship for a long time, when you do that too much, they get tired of it. 
And so it's not about not sharing with your wife. It's not about not bringing who you are to her. But it's about working it out and getting clarity with the men. And one of the reasons it makes sense to do that is because you never know what you have to get through to get to the truth. But when you're with the men, you could say whatever you want, even if that includes very ugly things about your woman. Mm, it's true. Right? So you want to get all that garbage out of your head, all that blaming out of your head, until the men can start helping you see, well, what's really going on? What are you responsible for? And what can you do about it? Now that you have some plan, now you can go back and start sharing where you're coming from, from a much more powerful place as opposed to a weak, angry, resentful place, a little boy place um, with your woman. So, again, it's not about keeping secrets, uh, although there are some things she doesn't need to know about, for sure. It's more about just coming to her like the man she needs as opposed to the little boy. Mm. Now, you talk about that in the book, too, and, and there's two two key distinctions here that, that, that I really got from the book. One was when you're talking about these initiated men or men that you uh, are in a men's group with as opposed to, uh, you know, your buddy who you go and play cards with or, or have a drink with, what, what are the key distinctions there between talking to your buddy and talking to somebody in a man's group? Well, if you have a buddy who is open and honest and you've been talking about the real issues all your life, you're very fortunate and it's a very rare situation um, because most of the time guys who have buddies, even if they go back to childhood, they find that they, and they know that they don't really talk about the tough stuff with their friends. And the difference in a men's group or being with some sort of mentor or initiated man of some sort is that it's all about complete honesty. It's about having the kind of trust needed to talk about the real fears, to ask for help about the problems that are really causing you pain around your relationship, uh, being stuck in your career, uh, being lonely, angry, um, not quite knowing or not feeling competent as a father. Mm -hmm. These are the things that um, we really need to find solutions for. And unfortunately... Um, if your buddies are just talking about sports scores with you, you're, you're never able to get to those important issues. And I guarantee you that every man you know is dealing with the same problems. And he is just, he doesn't know where to go with them either. And oftentimes, I've told the men, they found this to be the truth, that when they take this kind of vulnerability to the buddies in their lives, they find that oftentimes these guys are, have just been praying for an opportunity to talk about these things with somebody. Yeah. Now, now, tell me, Wade, I, I'm, quite a, I'm quite a laugh at here a little bit. How, how, then, how do the women take this when the man says, hey, I'm going to a men's group and I'm going to talk about, you know, all the problems? And, of course, the wife knows that, you know, uh, he's going to be talking about her. What, what, uh, what goes on there? What's the dynamics there? Well, the healthy women, um, grounded women, women who aren't jealous, yeah. those women applaud their men for going mm. to such a thing. Um, and um, fortunately, there are a lot of those women out there. Yeah. They know that they can't help their man anymore. They've tried for years. So they're grateful for having a place where he can go every week to work this stuff out. Um, and then there are women who are not so healthy, not so secure, and they, some of them just give their men a really hard time. I mean, brutal. Uh, it takes a very courageous man, uh, and we've had a lot of them over the years, who've been here despite their women just busting their balls every week. Yeah. But now, uh, why would a man stay with a woman like that? <laughs> Is that the big dollar? Is that the million yeah. dollar question? <laughs> yeah, you tell me. <laughs> Gosh, um, tell why do yeah. men stay in relationships that are not working? Yeah. Why do men stay in relationships that don't make them happy? Yeah, they're they unhealthy. Right. Well, uh, we don't want to be alone. Um, we make it about the money and don't want to give her half of our wealth. Mm. Um, we are just terrified because we have issues with mom that we've not dealt with. Right, yeah. Um, we think that we've 
that um, it'll be worse for the kids um, when oftentimes um, maintaining a toxic relationship is the worst thing for children. Yeah, that guys, I, I, I totally relate to what you're saying there. But, I often think my my uh, my mother should have kind of uh, left a little bit earlier. <laughs> but it's a t- it's a tough situation, you it know. Is, when yeah. you're in it, you can't see clearly, right? And that's why you need the men. I mean. You haven't seen clearly in your relationship since soon after it began. That's probably the truth for most men. You're in a honeymoon phase. You're in love. Sex is great. Everything's wonderful. Yeah, two years. Yeah. T- <laughs> by, by two years, you've already compromised yourself more than you can even imagine. Oh. that's an, an, What do you mean by compromised yourself in the relationship? Well, you know... Um, yeah, I love I like playing basketball, but um, you know she really wants me around. Right. Yeah. And so you do little things at the beginning that don't seem like much of a big deal, and then all of a sudden you get down the road and go, wait a second, I really miss playing this, and I'm really pissed at her because she made me quit. All right. The resentment sets in. That's right. And so that's why I suggest I'm telling I, I'm telling my son who's not married yet that it's a great idea to do work, something, periodically, a a retreat, a couple's retreat, some kind of counseling or coaching, or reading some relationship book to each other, to do the work before there's a problem. Get into the habit of reviewing what's really going on and creating an environment where you are feeling free to say everything on your mind. Because if anyone listening out there, if, if you have something important on your mind, and for whatever reason you're not sharing it with your woman, I'm telling you that is going to come back and bite you in the ass. Yeah. Well, you know, you talk about now. Uh, uh, there's the, you know, you talk about uh, it's the man's job, uh, and this leads into what you were talking about. There is it's the man's job to take care of the uh, the sex and the romance. And mm-hmm. you talked about a lot of these guys go, coming to these uh, your your men's groups, and um, you know, they're kind of in that, oh, should I, should I go, should I stay? And then there's all this excess stuff going on between, you know, whether it's... Uh, uh, <laughs> I've never even heard a full-release massage, but I know it was in your book. And, uh, you know, uh, talking about pornography and all yeah. these kind of ways not to kind of look at the situation or to put any energy on it, just to kind of keep leaking out the back door. That's right. That's right. Um, so w- what is the deal there? How do you, how do you take a man... And close all those doors, and why would he close all those doors and then start to really work on his relationship? Right. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of doing everything you can before you make a major decision. So if you've already committed to a woman, especially if you have children, you want to make sure that before you make that big and tough decision to leave, that you have been the man you want to be in that relationship. Okay. So what does it mean? One of the things that's required is that you, you close the back doors, meaning all of the sexual energy that, is in, that should be focused on your woman is going elsewhere. So if you're masturbating and watching porn, if you're going to rub and tugs, it's another version of full massage, <laughs> full release massage, rub. And, I'll give you all the terms. Yeah. Just, You've uh, heard about them all, I'm sure. I, uh, I've done my research. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> In the interest of men. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, of course. So, uh, or whether you're going to hookers or um, having affairs or chatting online with women, whatever it is, that energy is not going to your wife. It's not going into your relationship. Mm, yeah. And you can't expect anything to get better until you make a commitment to stop doing whatever's distracting you, and start refocusing back on the relationship. Now, so what's it going to take for that man, uh, Wayne, to make that commitment? Because that's a big word for us, too. Well, We, we, we want to get out as, as quickly as possible and get on to the next one, right? Yeah. Well, commitment is sort of, sort of like one of the cornerstones, really, of the work. And um, one of the things men have to learn, have, they have to learn when they come into this kind of work, is what a commitment really means. And it starts with, a group starts at 7 p.m., be here on time. Right. And it goes up from there. And um, commitment is, um, commitments are really helpful for us because it makes choices black and white. And once we make a commitment, we no longer have to wrestle with it 
constantly. Yeah. For instance, yeah. if if you're not committed to your wife, let's say, every time she asks you something, you have to think about, oh, I don't really want to do it. Maybe I should do it. Maybe I shouldn't do it. So much energy goes into um, each decision, each request. You know, compare it to the commitment that most men do have with around their children. If a child is sick, they take care of them. Yeah. If a kid has to get picked up, you pick them up. You, you don't think about it, right? It might be a pain in the ass sometimes or inconvenient, but you do what you need to do. When you're not committed to something, it could be very painful. Right, it, you're doing the old one foot in, one foot out dance. Yeah, and that's, and that, and that's really painful. I mean, yeah. it's something that guys are feeling every day because they don't know whether to go all in, they don't know how to get out, and they just struggle with it constantly. And not just around, you know, long-term relationships. This is around work. It's around, you know, anything that's important to them. Yeah. So what about these lads now um, that are, uh, you know, let's say wanting to get married? And, and we hear all the stories. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, we, hear, <laughs> we hear all the jokes about, you know, oh, it's all over now. And, and so what, what will really, how does a man know if he should marry a woman, if he should fully commit to a woman or not? What, what, are, the, what are some of the signs there, Wayne? Oh, my goodness. How old is this lad? You know, I mean... That season is, I don't know, between the, you know, 30s, 40s, you know, getting into that time of, all right, you know, it might be about time. It might be about time. Yeah, you know, um, someone uh, that I learned from a long time ago said, the time to get married is when anything else would be a lie. Oh, oh. And talk a little bit about that, Wayne. That's, a, that's, a, that's an intriguing statement. Yeah. It's, it's like you're done. You're done with other women. You've had those experiences. You've sown your oats. You know who you are in relationship to all kinds of women. And you finally found the woman with whom you have that deep spiritual connection where sex with her is different than anybody else, where you want to be with her in every way possible. And she understands you, she sees you, she supports you to be the man you want to be, she appreciates the differences between men and women. Now, only this can only happen if you've done your work. So if the things that I just described are not part of your relationship and you're about to get married, what it suggests is that you have not done your work. And what's going to happen is you're going to get married, and somewhere in those two years, you're going to start compromising yourself. And probably you already have hmm. in, in the dating um, you know, phase. And then your issues are going to start to come up. And that's just what relationships are for. You know, um, Relationships are there to help you become the person you want to be. Without relationships, there's really no impetus to change right it's the it's the greatest spiritual practice isn't it for a man to be yeah. in a relationship yes and so but if you haven't done any of your work going into it it's going to be a bumpier road mm. so when you say work now Wayne, you're talking about you know uh some therapy counseling getting into a men's group what are some other things that, that as a man we can do to kind of start the process of uh, uh sure. of healing self-development well you know i mean spirituality is very important to me and it's 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 everywhere whether you talk about it or not it's underneath everything we do so knowing who you are as a spiritual man is very important what that path looks like to you um reading um is important i mean there's so much information now on youtube um you could watch videos all day long that will you know give you some insight into the man that you are the man that you want to be yeah, I watched uh, I watched some videos there from a guy called Wayne Levine last week too on YouTube. Yeah, he's uh, he's not to be believed. Okay, <laughs> he was pretty <laughs> he was pretty convincing. <laughs> Wayne, listen, we we have about seven minutes, and I wanted to to kind of get into a little more meat and potatoes of the tools. Yes. Because I found them I found them fascinating. You have uh, eight better men 
tools in there. Uh, and um, we're going to, you know, absolutely uh, hold on to your nuts, the Relationship Manual for Men. Uh, where can people get that now, just so I remember to ask? Um, my website, bettermencoaching.com. Has um, links to all the various formats, written, electronic, and audio of the book. So everything you need to know, plus the links to the videos that you mentioned on YouTube. And I have a lot of articles, so there's a lot of information on my site. Got it. That, so yeah. bettermencoaching.com. Right. All right, so talk about the tools. Uh, there, was, there was one in there you had NAP, the N-A-P. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that was one of the suggestions in one of the tools about the notice, appreciate, and praise. Yeah. Notice, appreciate, and praise your woman we're talking about, not yes. yourself. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? We beat ourselves up so much that it's not a bad idea to do it uh, for ourselves. That's true. That's, that's a good uh, point. Right? A good but point. in the context of the book, it's about noticing, appreciating, and praising your woman for the things that she's doing for you. Um, you know, it's just such a simple thing, and we get complacent. Um, usually at the beginning of our relationships, we're noticing everything, appreciating everything, being grateful for everything, and then we get lazy. Yeah. And we start taking her for granted. And um, that's a, 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 slow, uh, uh, <laughs> a slow but sure road to unhappiness. Mm. And so we need to uh, pay attention and we need to let her know when she does things for us that we really appreciate. Even if they're the mundane, um, she needs to hear it. Um, there's a book, The Five Love Languages. Oh, is, yes, great right? book. Now, I think it could have just been a <laughs> – joke, I joke with my friends. It could have just been a page. Tell me the five. But, <laughs> but, but they managed to <laughs> build a true. cottage industry out of it, which, you know, God bless them. I wish I, I, wish I knew how to run business like that. Yeah, yeah. They, they had, like, all different variations of it, too, like Valentine's Day edition, and I'm sure yeah. there'll be a St. Patrick's Day coming up Genius. edition, you know. <laughs> right. Irish proverbs and stuff. <laughs> We we um, we demonstrate and we receive love in a particular way, mm. and it's important to know what your woman needs, and it's important to be with a woman who receives and expresses love in a way that really works for you. So I think it's an interesting book to read before you make that final commitment, um, because you may be with a woman who thinks of love as gift giving, and that may have no value to you at all, and you may not appreciate that. Versus a woman who appreciates. Um, uh, uh, acts of service or uh, physical touch or words of appreciation. These are different ways that men and women receive love. And you could be doing something for a woman that shows your love, but if it's not her language, right. she's not really getting it. Yeah. So it's an interesting piece of the puzzle. Um, so, yeah, we have, to, we have to listen and pay attention and praise um, uh, not just our women, our kids, our colleagues, our employees. Yeah, we. Uh, well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because women, women want romance and love, and men want respect. Would that be Would that be fair to say in a relationship? Um, well, we want respect, and then we want some sex. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. For Probably sure, sex, and then the respect. Or... Yeah, uh, respect is important. You know, men w men want to be honored. We want to feel. We, you know, when women do their jobs right. Um, for men, we go off to work ready to slay dragons, thinking that we're better than we know we really are, <laughs> right? Yeah. And the only way she's going to do that consistently is if you take care of her. And <clears throat> there's a lot of, and, you know, I wrote that book a long time ago, and I'm, I'm working on getting up the steam to write more. But um, one of the things that we talk about a lot is bringing out the goddess in your woman. Mm. And it's an important topic. It's not talked about very much. And, but when men bring the goddess out in their women, then they give them everything they'll need to be successful, happy men. Uh, but it's, it needs to start with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we, can, when we can stand up and be men, then that opens that gate for the, for the, for the woman to uh, not be a man and not do anything but just focus on being a woman. And then, of course, you know, it, when she steps into that, that, that divine feminine goddesshood, yeah. it, uh, it shares all the gifts right back to us, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And, I mean, there's literally no talk about that in this culture. Yeah, in the scheme of things, and it's it's so vital, and um, and women women don't even know that they can step into it. Who would uh, who would be a role model 
for um, a divine? Who 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 would who would be an example of that for you? Wow, that's uh, I have never been asked that question. Um, <laughs> you so you mean in popular culture? Yeah, in popular culture, who who would that be for you? Divine feminine. Who would exhibit some of those qualities and values and characteristics? I know women in my life who are like that, but I'm drawing a blank in terms of culture. I, I've not thought of that. What do you have in mind? Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you know, the only person I would think, uh, you know, uh, Amachi. Hmm. You know, to me, she is uh, she's an incredible woman, but a woman, you know. Um, yeah, uh, there. Are, I know women who are who are doing work here, spiritual and energetic work, who are goddesses. Yeah, right. And, um, and what what are some of their qualities? What are some of their their their, their values, Wayne? Oh uh, well, they're they're just they're always coming from love. Wow. Right, and you feel them. You feel them. And, you know, they have men around them who are protecting them as well, you know, and they've, they've done work to heal. And whether they've done in this lifetime or they came into this lifetime, more evolved. But, you know, when we're in the presence of a goddess, it's unmistakable. And, and we're not talking about, uh, we're not talking about um, sexual attraction necessarily. Um, we're, we're talking about something much more powerful than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you feel it. Yeah, yeah this, this, this Mother Earth, divine, nurturing, you just want to be held. And, um, and cry your eyes out. Yes. I, um, I went to Burning Man one year. Oh, that's great. Burning Man is wonderful. Yeah. So, I think everyone should go there at least once. Oh, it's an amazing experience. It is. Well, I had some hard times there. And because when you're there, the you know, depending on what your experience is, things come up, right? Oh, God, yeah, that's so right? true. And I ended up in, so in a camp that was offering healings. And I ended up grieving for an hour with a goddess hmm. who just held me energetically. And I healed these wounds that I had with my mother um, that I didn't even know were still plaguing me. So it's it's powerful, and and we have a lot of work to do as men with men. I think that's where we need to begin. But when we get stronger within our own masculinity, we're in a much better position to start healing the wounds that we have with our mothers. Hmm. So do do me a favor, Wayne. Kind of take everything that we've talked about today, and uh, just summarize it in terms of like um, being a better man. Yes. What, what does it take to be a better man? In order to be the best man you can be, you need to be in the company of other men. It's, it's in that company that you learn about who you are as a man, and you get the guidance and mentoring and ass-kicking and camaraderie and um, that you need to be honest, to make the tough decisions and to start feeling your own power as a man. So I, I guess my advice for all men is get into the company of other men. Mm. And uh, and uh, and read Hold On to Your Nuts, the Relationship Manual for Men. I highly recommend it. I love the book. Uh, and we can get that at bettermancoaching.com. Yes, and it's available at Amazon and Audible, but the links you can find on my site. Wonderful. Wayne, uh, I'd love to have you come back on the show and, uh, and pick up this conversation and have a little, uh, a little more chat with us. Uh, if you'd be open for that sometime in the future, we'll, we'll connect. Anytime, Darren. Yeah, wonderful. And appreciate everything that you brought to the table. And I'm sure there's plenty of men out there, Wayne, that appreciate it too. Uh, so they can get in contact with you. There's a, a, at uh, bettermancoaching.com if they want to find out about the retreats, uh, your, your book. Uh, and any, and you also do uh, one-on-one life coaching, right? Yes, most of my days are spent dealing uh, coaching men over the phone all over the world, actually. And then we actually have uh, phone groups for men who are not living in this area of uh, in Southern California. 
Wonderful. Yeah. Wayne, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we wish you all the best and success. And, uh, of course, thank you for putting, uh, putting yourself, your work, and your energy out in the world so that we can all become just a little bit better men. I appreciate that, and thanks for you know carving out this space on the airwaves to deliver good info to the man. Ah, thank you very much. All the best to you, Wayne, and, and we'll talk soon, mate. Take care. All right, cheers. Cheers.